Welcome back everybody, Eric here. Today we're at the Beretta booth 2014 SHOT Show. We're gonna show you guys around, show you some of the new products coming out uh, from Beretta this year. Let's have a look around, I got a, a lot going on. I'm gonna show you guys around today. All right everybody, I actually uh, got to run into Todd here at LPS when we were out at SHOT Show. In case you guys don't know, LPS is uh, known for making a lot of high quality uh, lubricants and other industrial products in the aviation industry. They're branching off into the gun industry. Um, tell us a little bit about what you're doing with Beretta. Yeah, well, we've had, you know, I have a good relationship with some of the sales guys from the law enforcement and the tactical units of at Beretta, and, uh, and they've been going around at this new ARX 100. It's a great gun, the apodextrous new uh, 100, and uh, they, at the end of their presentations, they've been using the LPS-1 to clean the gun, uh, prep it, maintain it, lubricate it for their following uses, and we've had a lot of good uh, uh, response from the law enforcement departments where they're going, and um, yeah, we're just excited. In fact, they're using, they're either using this wipe here, um, they, they're either using this wipe right here, you know, or they're just taking our can of LPS-1 and spraying it down, cool. uh, cleaning the barrel. But yeah, we, it, it's been really well. They've been using it in the vetting process of this, and, sure. and uh, we're expecting the relationship to build in the future. Well, um, I've been using LPS-1 for quite a while now. It's, yeah, it's, it's kind of like a little hidden secret. Yeah, it really is. You know, in the industry. So, yeah. uh, hey man, we appreciate it. Hey, anytime. We're going to walk around uh, Beretta booth here and look around. There's a lot to look at. We're going to get over here to Lynn. He's uh, one of the law enforcement uh, representatives. He's got a lot of knowledge when it comes to this product line. We're going to have a chat with him and uh, see what he has to say about these guns. Hey, well, thanks. I appreciate it, Eric. No problem, Todd. Yeah. Good seeing you, man. How you doing, shooters? Len Lucas here from Beretta Defense Technologies. Just to talk about Beretta itself, most folks think that we're just a high-dollar shotgun company or M9 company. That's not the case. We are a solutions provider. If you kind of see the names on the back of the wall, uh, Sako, Tika, Yaburti, Franke, Stoger, we own all those companies and we're a solutions provider to now. We can provide you handguns, shotguns, PSR rifles and patrol rifles, optics, laser devices, and binoculars. Uh, starting with this, as you see behind us here, is our newest platform. It's by Sako, our colleagues over in Finland. It is multi-caliber. What makes up the the calibers for identification, quick identification marks, known as three witness marks on the, the bolt, three witness marks on the box magazine, and three up here on the barrel. It actually helps the end user in low light conditions to tell them that, hey, I have these textile marks that I know that this is a 338 Lapua setup or kit. You notice up on my black gun, it's a one witness mark. One mark is going to let you know that it's 308. Two marks is going to let you know that it's 300 wind mag. Weapon system is multi-caliber. Everything is tailored or modular for the end user. One thing right off the bat I can say is this is just a very nice rifle. It just has a, a very good feel to it. Um, I imagine they're incredibly accurate. Very accurate, yes. That's quite the optic on there. That is our Steiner optic. It is a 5x22 with an MSR reticle, multi-purpose sniper reticle in it. Okay, so you got a uh, Clear co witnesses system up, with yes. the night vision yeah. optic. Wow, that's, uh, I've that's got my uh, aim point micro up front for when I transition to short distance, 75 and under, because if I got fixed power here, it looks like a big blur on the optic and I can just transition to my 75 meter and in on movement. Space. I'll tell you what, you're going to get those arms nice and strong carrying this thing around, that's for sure. Nice rifle though. All right. I know um, I've dealt quite a bit with the Sako rifles over the years. I've got a lot of vintage uh, Sako rifles, which I know not really the same company as it used to be. Um, we did do a video on the Sako TRG42, very nice rifle. Um, this one up, up here is more of like a kind of a scout rifle, more or less, a little bit lighter. TRG-22, it's 308. We also build this in 42. When we mention 22, it's going to be 308. TRG-42, it's either going to be 338 Lapua or 300 Wind Mag. Now, this is a very familiar uh, weapon silhouette. Um, this rifle is very famous all over the world. I mean, you see it in all kinds of places. Of course, popular culture, you see it in movies, you see it in, you know, all that kind of stuff. But in the real world, I mean, it is a uh, very viable scout rifle slash sniper rifle, spotter's rifle. I mean, it, this rifle can really fill a lot of different roles. Um, so yes, absolutely. I want to check out this ARX. Why don't we uh, kind of go forth and look at that? Sounds good. It's a nice rifle. 
All right, me and Lynn are over here. We're going to look at the new ARX 100, and he's going to tell you a little bit about you know what made that rifle uh, you know sort of come to be and how it got to the U.S. market. And we're going to have a look at the new rifle. Uh, you know that they do make a 22 caliber version. Uh, of that pattern of rifle that is available here in the uh, U.S. already. A lot of those have hit the markets already, but this is the 5.56, uh, you know, full, uh, you know, 5.56 caliber version of the rifle. Yes, the ARX started uh, in a, as a European gun uh, by the Italian defense side, and we transitioned into the ARX A2. Now we're into the A3, and then the ARX 100 is the, actually what's produced here in the United States. Semi-automatic, uh, but a lot of things have changed on the controls because we actually listened to the end users here in the United States and from the carbine contracts that are going on out there. Selector, ambidextrous, you have your bolt release here. You have three different extraction points for the magazine. You have traditional extraction here as your index finger, one on the bottom to remove the magazine and one on the other side, the left side. Of course, it locks to the rear on the last shot, no problem. That's correct. And uh, like Lynn said, fully ambidextrous uh, magazine release can be operated from either side of the firearm. Folding stock. Yes, extraction ejection can also be switched over, and so can the cocking handle can be switched over. Piston-driven system. I like it. It's a very comfortable rifle. Doesn't have a whole bunch of rail hanging off of it. No. I like uh, I like how they've got this cover right here. This kind of built in. I'm assuming this can be popped off. Yeah, if just you want lift, access to just, your rail. Just lift this up right here and pull, push it off. Oh, okay. I see. I'll neat. Just, just peel it up. You got to right. pry it. Oh, okay. Oh, neat, neat. Comes right off. All right. That way now, you if you look up rails. on the top here, we have a 40 millimeter uh, grenade launcher, our GLX. So now you can go from either standalone position, or you can take this off that and mount it to weapon mounted. Awesome. So you have two weapon systems on one. See that, uh, pop that back on there. Very neat. I like that a lot. Oh, it just slides all the way on. Very cool. It just gives the rifle a nice sleek profile. You don't have all those rails trying to grab onto you. And uh, not all of us want a forward grip on the rifle. So that's, you know, nice. It gives it more of a, of a real rifle feel while still maintaining the actual Go weapon Go ahead and fold the system. stock there. Reach over here, push this in and fold the stock. Stock is foldable and it's shootable from this position. Sure. How's the trigger? Trigger's very good. Not bad. Can't wait to get my hands on one. I think it'd be a cool rifle to play with. Just remember also this will be a multi-caliber weapon system here soon. Um, 300 blackout, other calibers that we are working on. Uh, just from working with our folks in the defense side, the military guys, uh, different calibers we're actually experimenting with. Okay, maybe like 6.5 Grinnell, 300 blackout, usual suspects. Exactly. Cool, all right. Um, I definitely want to check out this Pico. I've been hearing a lot about the 380. Pico is right behind you in the 380 caliber. Yeah, let's have a look. New 380, huh? As the mag release pivots down. Okay. Very neat. It's basically kind of a, a slim down version of the uh, Nano for sure, huh? Exactly. It's 380. Uh, notice the sights. Sights are user friendly. You can change out the sights uh, by using a set screw and uh, replace them with Trigicon. We kind of keep the same concept with the, uh, with the Nano. Give you some size comparisons to go on there, guys. And if you notice where the serial number is, the internal chassis, the the, uh, the frames itself can be exchanged with different colors, like what you see here on the Nano. See how the trigger is on it. Full double action trigger. It's not a striker fire design, so it's a double action, full double action trigger. Right, right. Not a bad trigger. You can definitely get used to that. Well, if you think about 380, 380 really barks in a, in a small package. But take a look at how our barrel design is. Our barrel design is lowered in the front end here. So you don't get that up, upwards crack when you're firing. More of a direct exactly. rearward motion instead of a flip, flipping motion. 
A lot of these little 380s can be snappy guns, so I could see where that would be handy. Um, definitely a cute little gun. I hate to use the word cute, but uh, I'm sure someone that's getting shot with it's not going to say it's cute, but yeah. Notice how your disassembly is. If you can use a standard dime or a, go ahead and take that apart. Notice your witness mark. All right. Okay. I'll slide the upper off. Oh. Comes a very, very simple, very simple package. So easy, even a soldier can do it, right? <laughs> well, that's cute. I like that. Now, if you can go further to take out the, the chassis system to change colors if you wanted to. This here is, you're going to rotate this down even further, push this out. This retaining pin is going to come out, and your chassis lifts out. right out. And it stays together. It's not going to disassemble or gut on you. And you can change out any color that you want. You know, it's interesting. Um, I've actually been carrying the Beretta Minx for a long time. I've got some older uh, Beretta Minxes that are chambered in 22 short, and uh, I carry that gun on a regular basis. I may have to replace my uh, aging Minx with something like this. Be a neat little gun to have. Notice it has a standard magazine. It also will have the extended magazine as well, so kind of similar to what the, the Nano will have. Okay, yeah, you get like a plus two or a plus one round, get the extra grip on the bottom. Very cool. Awesome. Gun's very comfortable. It can be carried in sports coat, pockets, shorts, even when summertime is, folks can wear their shorts. Um, does Beretta have any new like tactical shotguns coming out this year? Tactical shotguns uh, will be the 1301, okay. uh, but I don't have that here. Right okay, now. they're not ready yet. Okay. Well, Sandy, well, we greatly appreciate your time today. Pleasure. Thank you, Lynn. You have a good day, sir. Thank you. Awesome. All right, well, you guys make sure to tune in. We're going to have much more SHOT Show coverage. Um, we've been working our butts off getting some uh, footage out here for you guys. Uh, we appreciate your time today. We'll see you mo uh, more later in the week. Be sure to tune in. We have more coverage on the way. Have a good one.